So a number of years ago, I got involved in uh, this long distance running thing, these ultra runs, you run all day. And uh, one of the things that they talk a lot about is avoiding the chair uh, to just always keep moving, even when you get tired. And, and I was doing one of these and I kept, I was really tired and, and, and I kept thinking about sitting down. And the, the, the theory is if once you sit down, you're just never getting out of that chair again. So you don't, you know, sit down later, but don't sit down ever during this thing, you know, eat standing up. And if you're so tired, just kind of stand there or walk really slowly, whatever. The main thing is to like keep moving. And I remember I did this one and it was at night and, and uh, I finished it and I all day had been thinking about this chair and sitting down <laughs> and I finished it and, and I went and I sat in this chair and, and I will never forget the experience of sitting in this chair. It was sublime. It was, it was the most extraordinary experience of sitting still. Um, and anyway, this is Nicholas Wilton at Art to Life. And today I'm talking about stopping talking about how we go in and out of practice um, and how we go in and out of intensity. I'm right now just finishing uh, kind of the season of teaching, not just other people, but myself. And for that, it's the first part of the year, I'm really producing a lot of work. Uh, I have a whole bunch of paintings going on in the studio. I'm completing things. Um, and I can feel uh, that there's a slowing down now as I'm getting the things accomplished that I wanted to get accomplished. And I always feel a little guilty about it because I'm not able to keep going at the, the pace I've been doing. You know, I talk a lot about differences in art making. I talk about, you know, having, having uh, loud um, contrasty elements and really quiet elements in your pic in the picture. I talk about having like bright color, really saturated color and putting dull color next to that. Mixing in those differences uh, are, are powerful. It's what, it, what brings us alive, what's, make our art, it's what makes our art amazing. And even if you think about a painting, you know, like this picture that I've moved it down here. It's not finished yet, but in my studio, there's paint all over the floor and I've thrown, literally there's drips and I've thrown paint around. When this is done, when I take that painting and I put it in a clean space, maybe it goes in an office or someone's home or whatever, that's a powerful uh, juxtaposition of this thing that was made and it's messy and it's colorful and it's just, it's done in this certain environment. And then you remove everything change the environment, but leave this artifact in that space, it's really, really powerful. But our practice is also the same thing. The process of our art making has the same, uh, the same juxtapositions are needed. We're supposed to be working hard and being really super productive, but we also need the opposite of that in our practice, at least I do. And it took me way too long to figure this out. And I used to beat myself up because I couldn't keep going at the pace I was always trying to go. I would get sick or things would just happen where I, the break was forced on me instead of realizing that there's a natural ebb and flow to a, to a practice. How we fill back up is important. And the fact that we think about that and we don't often have time to do that when we're making our paintings, when we're making our art and we're so focused on get this done and this show's coming and this da, 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 that we stop thinking about the input. And that's so critical, that's so important. Um, for me, it's about, <clears throat> it's about having time, just space to pay better attention to things in my life outside of art that interest me. And that's usually something in nature or just having time of walking to the studio and seeing something that is that I'm curious about and standing there and taking pictures of that flower or whatever it is. It's the time often that is the thing that fills us back up. That's the, the, you know, it's it's not having time. And if we're saying this all the time, I'm just not time I'm so busy. You know, it's crazy this week, this week. Notice how much you say that and then realize that at a certain point, it's okay to like not be that way. This is such a hard lesson for me, but 
This is your insurance policy of new work, of making more powerful work down the road, get, taking some weeks off, slowing down, letting that become the rhythm of your process and not feeling bad about it. I always use travel as a really powerful way to input and refill. You know, everything, everything works in opposites. The, the waves come in and they go out. We inhale and we exhale. The sun comes up, the sun goes down. And once you start realizing that that is part of a healthy, vibrant art practice, um, once I started seeing that, I kind of let myself off the hook a little bit and, uh, and embracing it and knowing that that is where all this cool new work and these new ideas come from. I mean, I almost can't sleep at night when I'm not making art because there's just so many things that I want to do and, and I have time to talk to people and see things. It's you're just opening yourself to the world where normally you're just more focused and closed down. So that's another great way to think about it. That lens, it's, it's inward and then it's outward. Anyway, I just thought I'd share this with you because uh, I was kind of beating myself up about it, but I realized, oh my God, it's the middle of June and this is, this is normally when I kind of start slowing down a little. Uh, so anyway, I just thought I'd share this. It's something I've actually never really talked about. Um, I'm curious to hear what your uh, practice is like and whether this is, comes up for you and how you slow down and how you fill back up and if this is something that you're even thinking about. Um, and I'd love to hear your comments about that. So let us know. And um, for those of you who are new here, um, we have an amazing Art to Life Artists Facebook group full of people doing really cool stuff um, all over the world, all kinds of art. I mean, it is, it is truly becoming <laughs> an amazing um, compilation of global art. Uh, it just, it's really cool. So you're all invited. Um, I hope you come and join us. Thanks for being here. And uh, let me know in your comments uh, what you think about um, taking a nice big exhalation this time of year. Thanks so much. Okay. Hey everyone, if you found this helpful, I have a whole lot more to teach, share, and inspire you with every single week. So please join the Art to Life YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button below. Okay, great. Let's do this.